get to Mr. Jalen Brunson. Uh, been a big topic lately in terms of the fouls he's getting, the fouls he's not getting. Tibbs made it clear last night that he feels that Brunson is not getting calls. He's kind of danced around the subject over the past few weeks, but last night he said directly that Jalen Brunson's getting fouled. I would assume that he's going to take a little fine for that, but maybe he feels like it's worth it to get that message out there. He said it five times, I believe. I think think it was seven. seven. I think it was seven. seven. Yeah, I think it was seven, which I think he could have said it five times and it would have been okay. Mm -hmm. The last two maybe was a little much, but hey. Uh, I'm not writing the scripts here. So let's go to that topic, though. Brian Windhorst, I know you talked about this on the Hoop Collective. What are your thoughts on Jalen Brunson and how he gets officiated? Yeah, I was at the game in San Antonio last Friday, and um, that was another frustrating night for the Knicks where I think the free throws were 32 to 12. Um, And uh, Jalen is getting a poor whistle. He is also um, a victim of the way the NBA is officiating the games the second half of the year, where they're very more cognizant of the players who are contract or contact initiators and sort of foul hunters. And I know that people didn't like that I said Jalen was a foul hunter, but unfortunately he is a foul hunter. Not every time. That doesn't mean every time he's doing that. Sometimes he goes in there and he gets hit and he goes down and there's no call. But he has these tricks. You know, one of the tricks that he uses is he gets in front of a player and he stops, waits for the guy to run into him. That's the Trey Young. The league is like specifically outlawed that. Um, And when that happens, and I, you know, in the San Antonio game, I think he tried it three times. He actually got the call once. The other times he didn't get the call. Like they've like pretty much outlawed that. Um, so like, if you're going to get upset when you see that, and he's going to get upset when it happens, they're not going to give him that call. They're just not. Um, and so there's a, you know, both things can be true. He can be a victim of the league cutting down on foul hunting and he can be getting a poor whistle. Um, and it's, well, I think what the frustrating thing is, is that it, it feels like it's happened a number of games in a row and the Knicks are in a losing streak. Um, I think that's the combination of that. And uh, I get it. Um, and, you know, Tibbs is trying to defend his guy. And, you know, he also was the subject of a couple of very high-profile end-of-game calls earlier this season. Mm. It seems like that's his um, that's his M.O. I would say that Jalen is such a brilliant player that his game, it shouldn't be predicated on whether he gets fouls or not. No. Um, he, he His package that he has um he's like the best stopper in the league his ability to to slow to stop himself it's absolutely as elite as you'll ever see the way he's able to get a full head of steam and then stop and change directions he's he's such an expert at creating space i would just say to him jalen create your space don't worry about trying to get the contact um because he's so brilliant at it and uh but I, I understand the frustration, especially during a losing streak. John, your frustration level with Brian Windhorst and his inflammatory <laughs> comments on Jalen Brunson. No, look, I, I I understood where Brian was coming from. And I think it's fair to say that, um, look, if you're a small guard in the league today, if you are not to some extent going out of your way to see content contact and draw fouls, then you're not doing everything you could be doing to win. I think what got under the skin of some Nick fans is that, you know, when you watch Trey Young and you watch James Harden do what they do, that's to me at least, reasonable minds may differ. Like that that's not basketball. Uh, some of the stuff that they would resort to. And I think that's why the league, or at least part of the reason why the league ultimately felt the need to uh, change some of these rules. And Jalen Brunson, I don't think it you know falls into the same category as them, at least not to that extent. Does he do you know? Does he take a few pages from their respective playbooks? As Brian just said, the the, the stopping short, you know, the old the old Frank Costanza. Absolutely, he does, <laughs> and he and he and he does it as as well as anyone. Um, but there's also a lot of other parts to the way he draws fouls. And there's just a physicality to his game and how much he is willing to put his body on the line as a guy i know he's listed at six two i I, I don't think i've ever bought that but like and i think that's what what has 
I know me, you know, kind of perturbed more than anything because you're seeing things that even as the league has shied away from some of the stuff they want to litigate out, I think are, are still legitimate fouls. And I think we're in this kind of in-between place where, you know, what is a foul now? What isn't a foul? So I don't blame Brian at all. I, I would just like to get to a place where we have a bit more clarity on, again, what, well, what are legitimate calls. There's nuance, right? Yeah. Do I, is he falling down on three-pointers like Harden does? No, of course not. Yeah. But, you know, one of the things Harden was, is brilliant at is – Going into the going into a drive and placing his hands in a in a way that will guarantee yeah. a foul going up, um, you know. But what I'd say is is that they're not giving him the call. They're not. So, and I think I think just in general, when a team teams tend to lean on the officiating when their margins are tighter. So right now the Knicks are missing a few guys. Um, you know, Jalen's having games where he scores sixty points and they don't win. And um, it's 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 you know you you get more frustrated when you're when you're losing, and you need that call more than if you're not. Um, Jalen Brunson doesn't need um, to hunt fouls to be a brilliant brilliant player. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna get MVP votes on the ballot. He's having a brilliant year. He's going to get a huge contract extension soon. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't need to worry about that. And um, I get, I get the Tibbs. I, Tibbs has got to defend his guy and that's his prerogative, but um, I don't think it's healthy for Nick fans either to, to go into a game and think that they're not winning a game because, you know, they're not getting a friendly whistle. That's, that's not a way to. That's not a way to to to, to execute. And that's not the way. Frankly, that's not the way Tibbs executes. You know, Tibbs. You know, obviously he's got to defend his guy. But Tibbs is a, Tibbs is a believer. If you only well, they scored ninety nine last night, if you could only get ninety nine points, you then the way you win is by giving up ninety eight. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't. The Tibbs way is not to go and you know try to get a couple extra fouls at the end of the game. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't complain about it, but. I understand why I understand the frustration, especially when you look at the foul totals um, and the, the, and the, the feeling that it's happened several games in a row.